Hey guys, Ty here, and in this video, I'm going to show you um, kind of how to set up a cooling rig for your Oculus Go, and it works great. Just sticks on the front like that. It has pass-through power so that you can, uh, I just set this underneath inside of this uh, strap right here, but we can just kind of stick it on here so you can see, and then a short cable over to the Go to charge it. Uh, this thing will keep your faceplate ice cold. It comes with three power settings now. Small caveat the way, I mean, this thing is good to go right out of the box. You don't really need to do much uh, to make it work. I'll show you a couple modifications I made to make it lighter and kind of fit better, but it works right out of the box. You plug this into a battery or a wall charger, and you can use a wall charger because this will regulate the voltage. It brings it way down, and in fact, it will only power and charge the Go, and it barely charges it uh, with it on high. Uh, I tested it without it running battery or power pass through to the Go, and then I ran this, like some gun jack and a few intensive games, and I turned the screen brightness all the way up, and on low, it did a perfectly fine job of keeping the Go cool, and it's, you can, I mean, it's like a whisper. It's 10 decibels is what the manufacturer claims. Manufacturer says 10 decibels at low and medium, and then it jumps up to 18 decibels on high. But even 18 decibels isn't very loud. With it on high, watching a Netflix movie or playing a game, the sound drowns out the sound of the fan. Uh, but the voltage, and I tested it with the USB voltmeter right here, is only about uh, half an amp of power, a little less than that. It was like four point or point four three four five, right around in there. It kind of varied a little bit, going from uh, this pass through port over to the Go. The Go natively draws about one point five amps at five volts to maintain a charge or to go positive charge while you're playing it. And uh, yeah, so I found that. In the end, it's gonna basically maybe double the runtime of your go, maybe not quite so much. So if you're getting an hour and a half of game time, you can expect maybe three hours with this pass through right there. But you can't use like a big battery that will let it run for you know 20 hours or whatever and expect that kind of performance out of it. It will eventually die. It's just not giving it enough power uh, to operate the go and give you a net gain of power in its battery. But it will provide a much longer runtime and keeps your fan or the, the go cool just right out of the box like this and it, yeah so it works really well uh, if you want to mod it a bit and I will do that and we'll come back and I'll show you what I do uh, so that you get full power to your battery that is going to be possible and it's going to be easy to do we'll get to that in a second so um, I'll get to mounting it and then this is the fan right here so when you first get it it's got these uh, rubber pads on both sides, so there's four on this side, there's four on this side. I took off all four screws right here, pulled off the rubber pads, and then just put two screws back in to help reduce weight. On this side, the grill, and I don't know if you can tell in this because this fan's so small. On this side, the grill comes out. On this side, it used to come out, but I flipped it over and put it in here because I was trying to bring the grill as close to the fan as possible so that the fan would sit as close as possible to the faceplate of the Go to be as efficient as possible. Now, I tried tons of different ways to mount this. I used Velcro and like a ton of different configurations on the feed pads, on the body, on the feed pads, and on the body. And I could never get it to like stick really well and feel solid. It was always kind of wiggling around and there's just not enough surface on the feet pads. The bits of Velcro that I'd stuck to the face plate would just come right off and they'd stick to this because the Velcro is so sticky and there's not enough surface for the, the stick side of the Velcro to hold on to the face plate well. Um, a rubber band worked well. I did take a rubber band and just crossed it over so it kind of X's across like this and it held it in place and I had a fairly big beefy rubber band but I didn't like the aesthetic of it and you had to take your head straps off to feed it through and then if you take it off you still had to leave it there and it looked kind of funky so what I ultimately ended up uh, going with was a magnet design and I have these four magnets now the reason I said yeah let's go ahead and put these magnets on here they're not permanent I'm using double-sided sticky tape and they can come off and I can clean it off I did it a few times figuring out different configurations but I like it because I also use this OTG cable to read thumb drives on the go now it's not natively supported and you've got to jump through some hoops uh, to get it to work but this works great to hold that cable on and I know eventually they're gonna release uh, official support for that so you can watch videos and whatever application you want and I am going to be using this more often uh, so I thought yeah magnets on the front will work they're very low profile they weigh absolutely next to nothing and they're very powerful now 
This is one of the reasons I inverted the grill on the front was so that we could get it as close to it as possible. Now when I used one layer of this 3M adhesive tape right here, the magnets were sitting a little bit too far away from the grill. It would hold the grill on still, but it was fairly easy to pop off. I used two layers of the 3M adhesive, and there's no way you're gonna really be able to tell there. And now, it actually is not even touching the grill. It's just like a paper, the width of a paper, a sheet of paper away from the grill, and it holds really well. I mean, it's strong enough to hold the whole go up right here, but the magnets aren't actually touching the fan, so you're not getting vibration pass through. And we've got these rubber stoppers, which really helps with that vibration, and bam, now you could use the grill and just stick it on, uh, and you're gonna get a fairly good grip, but you're gonna get more vibration. There's not a lot of vibration with this fan. It's pretty smooth and it's super quiet, but I found that this was absolutely the best way, and I did, I tried like a hundred different ways. I sat there for like an hour and a half like fiddling and this was by far the best and it really sticks on here good. It's not gonna come off by mistake. You're adding hardly any weight at all and you can move it around and so it's just quick release, bam, you're good to go and voila. So now what I'm gonna do though is I don't like the way the pass-through works because I have to have it on high and if I turn it down, this voltage regula regulator regulates this output port right here, which is then going to the go. So I want this switch on the other side. I want it in between this. I want it coming from this wire, just going to the fan. I just want it regulating what's going to the fan. And I want this power out on the other side so it just goes straight to the battery and it's directly, or uh, straight to the go, and it's the voltage that is being provided by the battery that I'm using. So it'll make sense when I come back. So I'm going to cut this, do that. It shouldn't take but maybe 10 minutes and I will come back and show you what it looks like. So I will pause this and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. Uh, let me move this. I did this right here. So this is the end result. So it's much shorter. Uh, I use a separate small cable to go to the go for the pass through power. And let me just pull this off so we can take a look at this. So now here's the unit right here. So now the power switch is between the out bound port, the extension port right here in the fan. So this goes into your battery and it goes straight out to your pass-through power to the go itself. And then the power that's rerouted to the fan is controlled and not the outbound power. And this works great. Now, I just did like a super El Cheapo uh, job wiring this together. I just cut it. It's a positive and a negative and I just twisted them up put a little uh, uh, electrician's tape in there and some heat shrink over it. And I did notice that I'm only getting like 0.9 uh, amps out through this. And it's because I did the El Cheapo twisty splice here. If I used a little bit of solder, it would be more than what it is now. It would be the full amount of power that the battery can provide. Uh, so I did notice that eh, it's not quite as good, but to test it, I actually uh, played end space. My go was at 97%. I played end space with the uh, brightness turned up about 60%, the fan on low, and after 15 minutes of playing, I was still at 97%. So as long as the battery is gonna give you power, you're gonna continue to play with this El Cheapo. If you wanna take some time and do the splice right, use some solder, uh, you, you're, you're gonna have a net positive gain uh, a juice in your go right here. Uh, so yeah, so it works great and the whole thing is much, much smaller right now. And in fact, let's go ahead and, uh, and I'll weigh it. I got a little scale right here. Oh, 2.5 ounces. Okay, yeah, because I went a little negative. So 2.5 ounces with the whole shebang right here, which is not bad. And it works really, really good. You're never gonna have an overheated go and you're gonna be able to play for a long time. Do the splice right. Uh, and you are going to actually be able to charge the go from you know 10% all the way up to 100% with the right battery, with the fan on while keeping it go. If you do the splice right, if you do a quick cheap job like I did, it will apparently power your go at the same percentage until your battery runs out and this is a 5200 milliamp battery so i'm going to probably get about four to five hours of use out of that which is plenty and then whatever's left in the internal battery as well if we started off high so i love it great easy fun mod super cheap uh, this uh battery was 10.99 i will link to it below these little uh, magnets that I used on the front. I got I got 10 of them at Ace for $6, but I found them on Amazon. You can actually get 82 of them for $9.99. So it's, I'll link to those down below. So that's that. Hopefully this helps you and will prevent your go from overheating if you're a heavy gamer and you wanna play for a long time. 
That said, if you liked the video, as always, give it a thumbs up, please. I really appreciate it. It does help the channel. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that bell button if you are into this stuff. I post videos like this fairly regularly. And if you have comments, please ask down in the comments below. If you guys think you know a better way to mount it, have any ideas, tips and tricks. I know somebody's gonna mention using like a passive system. I just didn't want something that was that big and intrusive because I couldn't put the go in my case with fin sticking and it's already a pretty tight fit. But that is an option. So if you've done a passive uh, set with like a heat sink set up, let me know down below, maybe share some pictures. And that is it. I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks.